Hello again, Andy with Handy Andy Handyman, and welcome back to another inspection run through. Uh, and this bid is for an agent we've done a ton of stuff with uh, in Metro Atlanta. This home's actually in the Roswell area, and uh, we're working with the buyers on this one. The sellers recently did this whole retaining wall back here, uh, and we're having an issue because we just discovered under the garbage cans, here's the, this is the foundation drain right here. And so you can see it's cut, cupped up. So it's pooling water and silt and hydrostatic pressure is forcing water underneath and through the foundation on this inside corner of the basement. And you can see the silt that it's carrying through and washing across the threshold and down through this line. There's a few things coming together on this house for us. One, the gutters haven't been kept clean properly and they're probably clogged now. I don't know if the camera's gonna be able to pick it up, but we talk about this all the time. See the streaking? So that black streaky on the white gutter that lets you know the water's coming over the top of the gutter so this back corner of the house probably takes maybe 20 percent of the roof line water comes to this corner but we also have a foundation drain that's running all the way around the house and one end is here and one end is buried over here i believe under these bushes so we need to clear that out for them as well uh, we can see a little bit of seepage on the front here with really heavy rains we had a rainstorm the other week that would probably dump four inches of rain uh, just in a few hours, just a deluge. Uh, the, the homeowner, I believe, did this part of the work here and they tried to insert this block. If I come around, and so when I first looked at the house, I thought the foundation drain was in this corner right here, but it's actually here, it was under the cans. And you can see where someone cut it back at some point, it was sticking up, they left it sticking up. Originally, it was supposed to be extended out to about here so it would run down the drive and head towards that corner down there as a cut culvert that drains across the neighbor's yard. And so we would recommend, like for now, we just clear this thing out and I think it'll solve the problem. Um, if it doesn't, and it's something we'd recommend anyway, and we'll go around back here in a minute, but this deck just got built and we always install pressure treated flashing plates on a deck. It's just something standard for us. We do it on a lot of inspection repairs for either flashing missing on a deck, which is pretty common, and what it does is it obviates the need for flashing it forces water away from the house here it's got this soffit that protects it a little bit but out in the, the around the bay there's no protection for it and we want to keep whatever water is draining away from the foundation on this house if cleaning this doesn't solve the problem and repairing this downspout right here which is draining water it's gone on for a while here against the corner we would just seal that gap uh, but we'd actually would want to add another drain underneath this deck probably all the way over to the bay window uh, and install some crushed rock over it so it catches surface water that's coming off the backside here there's some drains in the retaining wall and you've got this nice um, natural refuge behind the house but it's on a hill so all this water drains this way you can see that water is not even getting to these bottom drains because they're bone dry they're totally bone dry so not much water whatever water is hitting this top area here is getting absorbed by the, the dirt and the, the plants that are up there at the moment. Um, but underneath the deck, there's nothing to absorb it, so the water just runs and percolates through, and we get to a point with such heavy rains that it just can't absorb the water anymore. And so it's backing up here because this is clogged and it's forcing its way into the basement. I think this is a pretty easy solution, to be honest. Uh, the inspector wants us to replace this threshold right here. Um, you've gotten a little bit of, of moisture damage here in this corner of the soffit to the left side of the chimney has dropped down. This gutter right here on the right front corner should be turned around and then just a little extension run to the edge of the drive right here and let the water naturally run away. Right now it's actually running against the, the slab and you can see the, the crack it's cut in the, in the driveway right there just from water over time. Um, we'll go around the front here, I guess. We've got just a little bit of rotted wood. These homeowners have tried to take care of the house it's just so hard to get the right people to do this stuff anymore. Some of the real little stuff, we started HandyAndyOnDemand.com now to deal with the smaller things. You'll prepay for two hours of service. The guys will come out and do what they can in the two-hour window. Um, some of this carpentry would always fall to Handy Andy. So like here, it's hard to zoom it in, but if you look at the centers of that foyer window, they're both rotted left and right, and the left brick mold is rotted too. There was one other window around here that had a little bit of damage. Again, you can see the streaking across these gutters, both of them. They need to be cleaned on both ends. The dog ears are what we call these triangles right here. And you can see where it's rotted. See the lines in it? 
So this builder used, and this is the right one over here, if I can catch it, right there. Sorry about that, it's not a lot of good lighting today. We got rain coming, see the rot? It's actually dropped its corner off right there. So we replace those, and what we do with dog ears is, the builders just use scrap pieces of wood to do it. We do it with a one by 12. All of our trim repairs are done with uh, premium materials. Everything is primed and sealed on all edges so it won't rot. We're coming around the back side of the house, and on this side, on the left side of the house, we want to pull these drains apart right here and just run water down them and see where it's coming out. We think we found the drain line over here past the hammock, uh, but they got a six inch drain going through there and I can't imagine what else is connected to that. This drain over here, I believe, goes around the retaining wall to take pressure off the wall. And you can see how much work they did in here. They spent probably 20 grand just on the retaining wall, I'm guessing. Uh, we're coming in and replacing all the siding. Uh, this is a, it looks like an LP type siding. It's wood chips and glue, or it could be masonite, which is cardboard siding. I don't want to pull it apart right now. But we've already given them a price to replace just the back siding on the house here. Whenever you see wrinkling like this, it just lets you know this is a right bay window. See this wrinkling right here? I can put my finger right through it. And over here, they put putty in it. And I can now see how soft that is. So that putty was done probably last year when they were getting the house ready for sale. Uh, so, you know, painters will do that because they don't have the carpentry skills. So when you're a homeowner and your painter says, yeah, we'll take care of the rotted wood, that's how they're going to take care of the rotted wood. The fungi that causes wood rot is anaerobic. So when you put a, a caulk over it or you put putty over it or bondo, which a lot of guys do, it ends up rotting out again. This is the same thing they did over here. See this repair? This is a repair from a painter, and it's hard on the front and soft on the inside. That's Bondo. Uh, so they've done different things with it. This is smooth with a bead siding. We'll come back with a smooth beaded uh, hardy plank siding. And that's another problem in Atlanta right now is that people are selling uh, Nichihana siding, which we call Nietzsche siding. It's a much cheaper product. They're selling it as hardy plank. It's not hardy plank. If it's not stamped James Hardy hardy plank on the back of that siding, it's not and you're buying a knockoff product. And what'll happen is areas prone to water, like this bay window or around these corners right here, or on the side of this bump out right here, it'll delaminate, you can put your hand through it. So you'll save a couple of bucks, and usually you're not really saving any money. The contractor's saving money. If you don't specify the materials, you're gonna get burned in Atlanta. I've been here 25 years, it's not sour grapes on my part, we don't need the work. Uh, I love the work, I'm fourth generation. It just kills me that people are oftentimes paying more for a job from someone who I guess is a better salesman than our people are uh, and getting inferior materials. And so just be on the lookout for that. Here on this house, there's a few other places. We got this, uh, the little behind the screen door on the deck. You can see they put putty and bondo in here on both sides of the jam. So we replaced that as well. We've got some rot in this right corner board right here that was also on our bid there. And you can see the condition of the siding. When you see this wrinkling on your siding, you know what shot out this is done i can put my hand right through it so just be looking for that this deck is brand new and whoever did it pieced in the flashing so it's leaking right here it's a little protected from the soffit of this bump out right here um, but we would still go ahead from this edge all the way around we would add a pressure treated plate and it would slide underneath here um, they also should have had a support under this threshold seal you know i'm 200 pounds 210 pounds and you can see me dimpling that threshold so it needs a threshold support under these doors. Our pressure treated plate would take care of part of that and then we'd add a secondary piece to support the jams of these two doors. Um, but it's really important to have that on your decks because the pressure treated plate is water shutting down the siding. It's hitting that piece of pressure treated plate and it's kicking it out to the next board. So draining away from the house. And the other piece I wanted to show you up here is around the corner, you can see where the water's draining right here. See the swale right here? And it's draining water right against the foundation, but look at the hole in the brick right there. See the veneer right there? Look at that hole. And the hole's gotten bigger because water's been running into it. And once it gets in there, it's got nowhere to go except into the basement. So um, that one bay of the garage is, is a little damp. It's been getting some silt in it. I don't think it's a huge issue. Uh, and I think really just cleaning that foundation drain and probably adding a secondary drain will solve their problem. Sometimes we have to do some of these things in steps. I'll show you just because the, the new buyers are going to be looking at this video. So we need to pull this drain line. Anybody that has gutters like this, once a year, get your handyman or do it yourselves. Pull these off, run a garden hose through it for a while, and find where it's draining and make sure that it's draining out. When you put full pressure on a, a garden hose like that, 
and they have little spinners you can buy at Ace Hard where you put on the end of it and it'll high pressure, almost like a pressure washer going through that corrugated pipe. We don't like corrugated pipe like this. We'll usually install a smooth four inch drain pipe because these corrugations, they go bad after a while, number one. Number two, when you've got trees and debris coming down your downspout, it'll clog in there. And once it dams up, you're done. Uh, and just people don't realize all the maintenance that goes into a house. A lot of people think you just buy the house and you sit inside it and it's great. And people worry about fixing the inside of their homes. They don't really look at the outsides until they have a problem. So this is original culvert drain or a French drain that the builder put in here. Uh, and we've got a six inch line coming in and a four inch corrugated pipe. So the four inch is probably here. I'm guessing the six inch ties into that back drain in the corner, but I don't really know until we put water in it. Uh, and I believe the foundation drain wraps around the corner and it comes out at the garage. Normally I would have expected to see it right here at this corner, but that's not how they did this house. So, uh, and then we got a little bit of a, a leakage here in the, uh, in the sprinkler system out for the front yard. You can see the water all collecting through here. And this is, is totally wet right here as is that corner over there. It's always had a little bit of a runoff from the, the back hill and the neighbors. And so you can see when they did the hardscaping here, they extended this brick paver to catch some of it. And you can see where it's still eroding a little bit at the edge of the, the, uh, the brickwork right there. So overall, a great house. We've done quite a few projects in this neighborhood over the years. Uh, it's, it's close to downtown Roswell. And it's kind of a forgotten neighborhood, to be honest. Uh, so they're getting a really nice house. It just needs a little bit of tweaking. And you can see here along this edge, they've had drainage. You know, you're on the back end of a hill. So all these neighbors up the hill all drain this way. And originally there was a culvert through this neighbor's yard, which has since been removed. But this stuff is still draining this way. This was built from the original builder. This isn't new concrete. And it's just gotten filled in with plants and whatever else they had over time. So anyway, we can pretty much fix anything uh, outside of HVAC. We can refer you to people for that. We got carpet cleaners to refer to you. We got all kinds of people that we can send you. We've been here for 25 years. We do it all. You just have to be patient with us. You can reach us at 770-912-2829. I'm Andy. See you at the next house. Bye for now.